to be a fashion designer when I was young. Um, probably early teens. And I didn't draw that well, so I thought maybe I could never do it. And I studied filmmaking instead. Then, and photography. And then I, well, through a series of circumstances, got back to designing. I went to school for nine months. And Parsons and FIT in New York. And then I decided the way the schools were there that if I stayed any longer, I'd lose all interest in designing. So I quit. And I just opened my own brand. And basically, I grew up in public. I didn't know anything. But I had my own brand for 13 years in New York. I moved to Paris. I did different things. I was a costume designer. I worked on a few films um, with Amos Gatai. Gollum Esprit de Ecclesio was the first one. Then I worked for CBC, it's Canadian Broadcasting. They had a show called Fashion Files, where Tim Blanks was the on-camera person. And I was just the assistant to the producer. And then I worked at L.com for about three and a half years, reporting on fashion, doing designer profiles, events, things like that. And then I went to VogueParis.com because the same editor from L set up VogueParis.com. So I went with her, Tina Isaac. And then during that time in 2005, February, I started my blog. At that time, there were economic, political, and food blogs, but there weren't any fashion blogs. And then in 2006, I started my fashion film festival. And it was a different name. It was called You Wear It Well. And I did it with a collaborator in Los Angeles. And it always was the idea to travel. But in 2008, it became a real festival. And that was at Jeu de Pomme. And then I called it ASVA, for Shade of You and Fashion Film. Well, it travels a lot by invitation only. And it's launched every year at Centre Pompidou. But during the 12 months between the initial launch and the rebirth, it travels to different places. So um, sometimes it's, uh, well, all the time, it's pretty customized. Sometimes, like in Barcelona, where I just was in January, it's a four-day festival. And we had new material and new conferences and new carte blanche. Uh, it's open to the public. It's for everybody. And of course, I'm the filter. We had like, all together with Spain, we had more than 800 films I had to look at. It's a lot. But then we have a jury, you know, the power people in the industry, both in fashion and film. And then they make the choice. I make the initial selection, and the jury makes the gift surprises. The jury, uh, Mike Figgis, Rick Owens, uh, Elizabeth Kahn, she's Paris's best uh, film critic. Um, Glenn Adamson from the Victoria and Albert Museum is gonna be on the jury. He lets Stefano Tonki, Tim Blank, style.com. I know him actually from when I was a designer. Of course, I have Rossi De Palma too. She's great. She was the ambassador for the festival last year, and I'd like to ask her again this year because she's fantastic. People I respect and I think um, have a good point of view. Of course, it's much more interesting if a film is made for the festival. Um, that's why we have these little contests like the one I'm, I'd like your readers to participate in. Because I don't know at the moment if I have any Turkish directors. 
And I'm not in a position that I can say, here's a budget, make a film. But then I don't think most people are either. I would love to be in that position. However, I don't have the backing of LVMH <laughs> to make it possible. So it's up to the director to come up with their own uh, resources to make a film. But I think the, um, the whole idea of the internet and films being on the internet, it's increasing the, um, the brand presence and the more eyes that see the film, the better. And directors are very happy to have their film seen. So, um, and the brands are very happy. Because in the beginning, I mean, look what's happening now with fashion shows. There was a time when everything was so exclusive that um, only 250, 500 people could be privy to seeing a fashion show. Now we have live streaming for everyone, practically everyone that can afford to organize it. So the whole industry is changing. And I think, um, personally, with a few exceptions, I think runway shows are very last century. And I think the, the new way to present fashion is through films. Well, I, maybe it's easier to say what I don't want to find, which is, of course, the tendency now is for all fashion photographers to pick up a video camera and become a filmmaker. And it takes more, um, uh, it takes more than that to be a film director because there are different concerns um, in a still image than there are in a moving image. And um, although some fashion photographers make the transition very easily and have been doing it for years, like Ellen Von Onworth, Bruce Weber, uh, Stephen Klein, and more recently, Stephen Mizell and Inez and Venu, they all do a successful transition, and Nick Knight, of course, because he's a pioneer. But many of the fashion photographers are just making a fashion shoot that's moving, and I don't consider that a film. So um, you have different elements when you have a frozen image that concern you or when you have a, a moving image. And where I don't really agree with Nick Knight, who says uh, you don't need a story to make a film, I think you do. I think, of course, there are exceptions. You know, it's nice to have beautiful images, but after three minutes, it's boring, generally speaking. Yeah, you should have, you, you should have all the same concerns if you make a fashion film, if you make any film. It's, it, the only difference is the fashion has to be a protagonist. Aside from that, it's, you know, it's a script, it's the lighting, it's the sound, it's uh, the acting, it's the art direction. There are even more things you have to worry about when you direct a film than when you shoot a frozen image. If I'm looking at it, you know, essentially thinking about fashion, I would say Tokyo and London and Paris, of course, but you know, that's a given. It's because um, people love to dress up They're, and it's more individual. And uh, even if you make a mistake, they're having fun. And I think that's what fashion should be. I think it's a form of expression and um, passion, but if I'm thinking about it as just a place that t touches my heart, you know. One time my festival was in Santiago de Compostela in Galicia. It was pretty amazing. And of course Barcelona was amazing at uh, Casa Forum, and it's a contemporary museum. I like to be with museums when possible, but it's not always with a museum. For me, I think um, Rick Owens, Raph Simmons, Heider Ackerman, Ricardo Tisci. Um, I love Boudica. I think Boudica is brilliant. 
not, doesn't get as much attention as they deserve. Husan Chalayan, um, among the younger ones, I'd say Jean-Paul Espagnard, and of course, um, for innovation, Raquel Cuba, Comte de Garçon, and Junya Watanabe, Jun Takahashi for Undercover. Um, there are plenty. I, I love fashion, I love creation. There's a big difference. There's fashion and there's style. Fashion is something you buy and often has a sell-out date. Style is something you own and it costs nothing. It's just uh, innate. So I'm more into style than fashion. But I know more fashion than most people. I also like, obviously, the designers I wear, like Budika, Radharani, he's made this jacket. David Seto, he made the skirt. Uh, Budika, the shirt. There are people I live in, and Dries van Noten, someone, uh, the, Dries van Noten is someone that has his own style. I, I don't know if you call it so much fashion, because it's timeless, and what I like is timeless. That's probably why I like the people I like, because their clothes are timeless. All, all the people I mentioned. It's evolved over the years, it's decades. It's my style, you know. You, you dress to please yourself, and you um, make choices. I don't, I've never believed when I was designing or now, I'm not one to follow trends. I really don't care about trends. And what's interesting now is that major people in the industry are starting to say the same thing. That trends, you know. My thought about trends is if you're trying to follow a trend, you're already too late. Because it's, uh, it's a personal style. I just like a certain silhouette. When I was a designer, I started wearing black. Because um, I felt when if I wore print and color, I was distracting myself from what I was creating. So I liked the feeling of being a blank canvas. Some people like Martin Margiela, they choose white lab coat. I chose black. But when I was designing, it was more like black shirts, big black shirts, skinny black pants, trousers. But I don't know when I started wearing skirts sometime over the past 20 years. <laughs> Before that, I was always in trousers. And I like uh, fluid volumes, you know? I like a skirt that's fluid. I don't like things that are too stiff. I, don't, I like to put on my clothes and then forget about them. And I don't really distinguish between day and night and spring and winter, except layers. But it's always the same. But it's with different elements, but the silhouette's the same.